why you should never pay off your home. Now, a lot of people are going to argue with me and say that that's not a good idea. But the reality is, if you actually want to become financially free and grow generational wealth, you're going to have to take advantage of banks or people who are lending you funds at really low rates and reinvesting it for a much greater return. My name is LJ Aguinaga, real estate broker and investor. And today I wanted to walk you through how you can become financially free by using leverage and an arbitrage opportunity. So let's start off with the word arbitrage. What does that mean? Arbitrage is whenever you can borrow at one rate and then profit at a greater rate and essentially earn the spread. So in this case, if you were to remortgage your home and you were to borrow at 5% today, but you can invest that money and create an ROI or return on investment of 10%, we've actually created a 5% opportunity of arbitrage in this case. But let me break down an example of how you can actually use this arbitrage opportunity or borrow more funds from your home. Let's say that today you have a mortgage of a, with a balance of $200,000, but the property is actually currently worth $500,000. You can go to a bank and you have two options. You can refinance your property and the bank is typically going to give you 80% of the value. So in this case, they will give you $400,000, which means that they will pay off the current $200,000 debt and you're going to get a check for $200,000, which you can go reinvest. Or you can ask for a HELOC, a home equity line of credit. And with this, it's basically having access to a line of credit that you can utilize whenever you want and only pay interest when you actually use it. Now, the HELOC is typically going to come at a slightly higher interest rate, but the fact that you can use it whenever you want and don't have to take it all at one time is quite advantageous. That is an example where you can borrow money from your current property and then go and reinvest it into another property. Essentially, that's what I do with every single one of my investments. I find capital that I can typically borrow at a low rate. I then go buy a rental property that is then going to grow in value through appreciation. I will collect the cash flows every single month. And I'm going to have the tenants that are going to be paying down the capital for me. Now, the more of those you have, the more opportunity that you're growing. Now, if you're still with me, most people are going to say, LJ, I need to pay down my house. I need to make sure that I'm debt free so that I can live comfortably. The reality is you're going to live safely, not comfortably, because if you go down that road, eventually you're going to have no other income streams. And if you have no other income streams, you're going to have to remortgage your home. You're going to have to sell your home. You're going to have to use this one asset that you have, that, which is your entire nest egg in order to continue living by taking that money earlier while you're still earning income that you can pay down a higher mortgage rate, if you will, and investing it and generating other sources of income or what I like to call, I like to call mailbox money, you will actually be diversifying and creating generational wealth by having other income streams. Even if you choose to stop working, you're still going to be collecting the rent from those tenants. So the goal here is to collect as many rental properties as possible or invest into a company that's going to be paying dividends or even a dividend paying stock, but invest into something that will be giving you a return that's greater than the rate that you're borrowing at. That's why I believe that paying off your mortgage is one of the silliest things you can do unless you already have enough income coming in from other streams that will pay that off for you. At that point, you can start to relax. Okay. That is my advice to you. Don't pay off your home, use the money, but use it intelligently. This doesn't mean that you can go off and pay for a vacation or buy a new car or do anything like that. You have to invest the money into things that will generate cash flow. And I can't stress this enough because if you're not intelligent about it, that's how you can get into trouble. That's when we have the separation between good debt and bad debt. You have to make sure that you're using it to get good debt. Good debt is any asset that will generate income for you. And bad debt would be credit cards, lines of credits, or debt that you get into because of your wants, because of your desires, but that will not generate any income for you. Now, please make sure that you start taking some educational interests into investing. You can't just buy anything, but if you're intelligent, you've done some research, you're watching this video, you're probably gonna be able to find a great deal that's gonna pay you huge dividends. Please comment below if now you're reconsidering your thoughts on paying down your mortgage. Thank you